Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome to 2024 and another exciting year here at the Lazy T. So I guess I have some explaining to do. It's been about three months since my last post, and I wanted to take some time here this morning uh, to really kind of get you guys updated on what's been going on, how I left things here with Cabin 2. You can see it's a little more completed behind me than what I last showed you in my last video. So like I said, about 90 days since my last update, and I need to get you guys kind of spun up on what I've been up to, where we're at here at the cabins, and you know, all other comings and goings of here at the Lazy T. So let's get this thing going. Okay, first off, update on what I've been up to. So basically, it's just one of these life situations here. Back in end of last year, I guess the last quarter of last year, some decisions had to be made, family things pop up and everything like that. So when all things came, when everything was said and done, I ended up having to go up to New Jersey and basically remodeling a four bedroom house, the house I grew up in. So that was quite the adventure. Rebecca has was up there probably a month before me because she was handling some of the other financial stuff that goes on with that. And once all the financial stuff was squared away, I needed to get up there and started to get to work. So basically November and December, I had spent up in New Jersey remodeling a house, uh, two whole, well, three bathrooms, two and a half baths. Uh, Rebecca painted the inside of the house basically four times. Uh, it, it was really just something else. Basically bringing a house from the 80s up into some, you know, more recent times and stuff. So it was quite the adventure. It was day on, stay on. We didn't take a, a day off really to do much of anything but, but work. I, I didn't even really get to see friends and stuff while I was up there. You know, people I grew up with and stuff like that. It, it was really super busy. And by the time everything was done, I mean, the day we were leaving, uh, we missed our projected day. We were trying to leave on a Saturday and it, it didn't work out. We ended up leaving, I think the next Tuesday or Wednesday, but that day, just to, to show you how kind of crazy it was, I was running caulk on baseboards while Rebecca was loading the bus the day before we left. So it it was just nonstop and constant go go go. And you know, hopefully everything is gonna gonna work out good good with that. So we came back here to North Carolina together, and that we got back here on a Thursday. The next day, Friday, we went and picked up a rental car. And then Saturday morning, we were back on the road again and heading to Louisiana for Christmas. So I have only recently come back from Louisiana. Rebecca is still in Louisiana. Uh, she has some other things she has to get done while she's down there. So I needed to get back here and get going on the cabins here and uh, kind of kind of get back into our life here in North Carolina. So. That's kind of the update. I'm sure there's a thousand things I missed in there as far as what kind of we've been up to, but you know, we, we've certainly been busy just not here at the cabin. So, but we're back. Like I said, it's the start of January. I took a look at the last video I posted this morning, uh, back in October and it was, it was funny because I had opened up the video of course I normally do where it's saying, Hey, you know, it's, whatever degree out and that day it was going to be 71 degrees and this morning when i woke up it was 19 out here so definitely the building conditions have changed uh you know obviously that that's expected and things like that but you'll definitely see me out here uh, get my burn barrel going and stuff like that and uh warming my hands up quite a bit so it's probably in the 20s it was snowing a little bit ago and yeah we're ready for a january february uh you know kind of crummy weather building out here and uh you know we're gonna get into it so as i was looking at that video that i posted back in october you can probably see behind me things are not where you know i left off with that video 
because I was really coming down to the wire. Uh, I had gotten word from Rebecca that, hey, everything's good to go. You need to get up here and start getting to work. So that's what I did. I had to kind of hustle through cabin two here. I knew I had a goal. I wanted to get the roof sheathing on cabin two and get um, some underlayment on it up there just to kind of protect it while I was gone. I knew I would be gone for some time and I wanted to do the best I could to kind of keep this thing in pretty good shape while I was not here. So let me let me turn you around and show you what's been going on. Well, this is the current state here of cabin two. Like I said, last part of the video in October, it, the rafters were the only thing that was up there. And so I spent the last, I think, two or three days getting it to the point that you see here now. So I've got the fly rafters on and attached, and these were made a lot better than the last uh, cabins one and three. The supports for these fly rafters come in. They go over this gable side rafter here, and they actually connect into the second rafter. So they are certainly more sturdy than the other ones that I have uh, built. And, uh, you know, I'm not expecting any problems with that. So uh, definitely my uh, sheathing here is is runs wild here, so I'm going to have to trim that. But... Uh, it went great it went great at least getting those fly rafters and stuff up there those went up really well kind of without a hitch and everything looks good and lined up again i'd like to stress <laughs> stress the point i saw this in the video as i was uh reviewing it today the ridge board on this is that lvl and it that was absolutely the best thing i could have done so and let's see as i'm looking up in there now i also have the collar ties in so collar ties were installed. They're up, they are butted up against the ridge, ridge board up there. And they'll do well to add that little level part of the ceiling. Now the, let's see, what else? As I'm kind of looking around, I'm kind of seeing things here. So the freeze blocks are up and installed. Everything is nailed up in there as well. And then the final thing that I did, of course, as you can see, is put the sheathing on. Now I must say that because the ridge board was so straight and level, it really made putting on the roof sheathing much easier. Uh, it's amazing how, you know, an eighth of an inch here and there really kind of add up after a while. And it, it, it just went up like a dream. I will say the putting up the roof sheathing up there those five eight zips that was the, that has been or i should say that was the hardest part of these cabins so far of all the cabins i've built down here putting up that roof sheathing was the absolute hardest thing i've done now i say that's was the hardest thing i've done here with these cabin builds so far and it was just a, it was just multiple factors that kind of added to that. One, Rebecca wasn't here when I was working on all that stuff. So this was one of those situations where if I fell off a ladder, I'd probably still be laying there. Uh, it, it was definitely a, I really had to be careful. That was one. So the, the, the ground was, you know, nothing here is level. Everything is up. So... There I am on a step ladder with two by fours underneath the feet, trying to level it out, trying to lift up. Uh, I've talked about those sheets before. They're about 75 pounds a piece. So a four by eight sheet is pretty, it's just kind of difficult to handle. Uh, getting up a shaky step ladder and then onto uh, that pitched roof. Now I tried just about all the tricks of the trade that I know I drive in a nail try and get it up over the nail so it'll hold it up onto it up onto the top of the rafters and stuff it was it was a battle and I tell you it took it took some effort to get that stuff up and done like that so uh, 
that took that took a day i think to get that at least a day if not a day and a half and then getting up the underlayment up on there wasn't too bad now that cabin two it's going to be two and four are going to be basically the same layout and the roof pitch on that is slightly steeper the others are a 412 and this was a 512 so the boards themselves wanted to slide down the rafters kind of all the time and you know trying to hold up that sheet of plywood on the rafters while it's sliding down on top of you basically on a shaky ladder and then with the other hand i'm reaching up with my nail gun to try and get a nail in all the while trying to hold it square on the rafters line it upright it was really <laughs> it was really something else now i didn't you all know this i've talked about it several times filming uh, certainly uh, extends the building time and things like that it definitely takes away a lot of time from actual building so that was i didn't have the time to set up the camera and kind of show you what i was doing uh so you know i apologize for that but i had to get things done and that's just the way it all it all worked out so i looked at some plans last night and i have kind of a plan going forward so let's talk about that okay so where we're at and where we're going this week so i had to kind of walk around a little bit yesterday just to kind of remind myself where i left off and i think i left myself in a fairly good position but moving forward we're going to have to really get the mill fired up and start cutting a lot quite a few wide boards let me show you let me show you my plan uh, starting tomorrow at least what I'm going to do with some of this lumber that's sitting here. So next step for cabin two, I've got all of these wider boards here. These of all, they have one side milled uh, smooth side and they also have the rabbits, the rabbit joints cut in them. So that is going to be my interior sheathing uh, for cabin two. I believe what's sitting here is enough to do the front and the back side of cabin two. So the gable ends, I still need more lumber. In fact, as I look down through here, these are all 10 footers. So this is only going to be the, uh, the front and the back of cabin two. So I need 12 footers to do the gable ends. So that's going to be on my cut list here coming up. So in order to make room for the stuff I have to cut, I'm going, I want to get rid of this stuff here. So I want to get this stuff up onto cabin two. And I th that, sh that should go pretty smooth. I'm not anticipating any issues. Now that stuff has been sitting here for some time. I did that probably, I don't even think it was October yet, uh, maybe back in September. So I'll, I'll get the moisture meter out and check that stuff, but it, it all looks fairly dry and uh i don't see much warping to it so this stuff will be gone we're going to put that up on cabin two uh hopefully starting tomorrow which means i've got a pretty good size area here for me to put some new uh cut lumber which you know is going to be the next thing on the list so we're getting coming over a pile here this is this is all the oak that i cut this is all flooring here it's kind of scooped down under here this here on this right side is all flooring this is white and yellow pine still kind of extra boards and things like that and then i have some oak down there on the end as well for flooring so my idea is that once i get rid of this end pile i have space down there to put fresh sawn lumber so my process i'm thinking of how i'm going to accomplish all this here once i get the interior sheathing for the front and back on cabin two like i said i'm going to start to mill i need quite a bit of lumber beyond that point so if you think the interior sheathing what i have right here ready to go right now is just the front and back so new stuff i've got to cut will be interior gable ends those are 12 footers and then i will have exterior front and back and then the two gable ends so basically need six times the lumber of what uh you saw here on the ground uh that i'm going to use for the front and back uh for the interior sheathing so 
I've got quite a bit of milling to do now. So we'll get that up. I'll mill a bunch. And then while that wood is drying, I'm going to start working on the floorings for cabins one and three. That's the oak that's been sitting here. I've got to figure out my process about how I'm going to do that. Get all the boards uh, at least in the same row, the same width. So everything kind of lines up right. And whether or not I'm going to put a uh, like a tongue and groove on the flooring boards yet. Uh, not quite sure how we're going to handle that, uh, if we're going to do something like that at all. But all that stuff's got to be thought about and uh, worked on, you know, while the other, all that wood I'm going to mill here in the coming weeks, uh, all that's got to be drying while I'm working on the flooring and stuff. So another advantage of this, as far as the way I'm kind of working right now, is as the as the wood is drying uh, i'll be inside the cabins working on the flooring so you know even really without a door and without that uh center window up top i should be able to keep that area at least somewhat warm so it'll be pretty nice probably working inside those cabins here during the winter time and uh you know there's always something to do inside each of these cabins uh as car as really as far as any type of finish work and things like that so i should be able to really take some time allow the wood the siding to dry as best i can and then uh you know by the time that comes around uh to put that stuff up that should go up pretty seamlessly so we'll see you know how that goes so that's kind of the plan of what i'm working on and as you know i work through all of this uh flooring material here you know, I will again replace a lot of that with a lot of the pine that I'm using for other parts of the build and things like that. I'm not quite sure if I have enough oak for cabin two. Uh, I may, we're, you know, we'll know more once we get into it and we'll know more once we get into these piles here about see how it dried, what the cracking situation is. And remember a lot of that oak, uh, there was some rot in some of it. So we've got to kind of look at that, see how we want to tackle that. Uh, you know, obviously, and use as many boards as I can, uh, you know, just trying to be as most efficient as I can with the materials that I have on hand. So that's kind of where we're looking, at least for the lumber aspect of the project moving forward. All right, gang, that's probably going to wrap it up here for today. I just wanted to give you guys kind of a little update on what's been going on and where we're going uh, on here in the near future. So I'm going to spend the rest of the day, I got to walk around the property. I have to identify some trees um, that we're going to use, uh, you know, we're going to mill up here. I also want to get some of the tools and stuff back down towards the cab and just kind of make it a little bit easier once we start driving nails tomorrow. So I'm going to work on some of that today and you guys don't need to come along for any of that. So uh, that's what I'm working on today and we'll try and get down there and get some stuff done tomorrow. So as far as the channel goes, uh, you're going to see fewer videos. Uh, historically, I have been trying to get a video out just about every day, every other day, something like that. And I think I'm going to actually try and put a better quality video together, just kind of encompassing what I do kind of throughout the week. So maybe every four or five days, something like that, you might see a new video from me. But it's all going to be just kind of figuring it out as we go along so i was kind of taking a look at the channel this morning i've got 160 videos out there uh, you know looking at some of the early ones i have definitely improved uh on some of the the quality of the videos i'll say some some things i will still uh it seems like i will never get good at but uh we'll we'll, we'll see how it goes so just kind of keep your eyes out uh, I'm going to get this one out today. I know some of y'all have been hitting me up for an update and things like that. So uh, I just want to get you guys informed. And as far as the Lazy T goes, you know, having been gone for the last couple months and really losing a lot of time, a lot of building time down here with the property, uh, opening up here, you know, spring of this year is probably not going to happen. I, I almost guarantee it's not going to happen. And uh, that's just kind of the way it goes. So at some point we'll open this year uh it will happen in 2024 that i guarantee you uh but you know you got to roll with the punches and um we're just going to keep on going
So listen, guys, I appreciate you hanging out here. I hope you're looking forward to another, uh, another exciting year of things going on here at the house. And uh, yeah, we'll catch up with you when we see you.